my name is Marlene and welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you have been online at all recently, you've probably seen an uptick in the number of astronauts hanging out with cute ducklings, <laughs> otters reading iPads on planes, and just a wide variety of very cool self-portraits or sometimes magical fantasy worlds that you feel like you might have seen before but you can't quite put your finger on exactly where. Well, you might know that these images have been AI generated and they've come about as the result of the rise of latent diffusion models and in particular, a type of Python deep learning model called Sable Diffusion. I've always considered myself to be an artistic person. I feel very creative, but whenever I imagine a picture in my mind of what I want to create, then I go to put it on paper or whatever other medium, it just doesn't turn out the way that I expected it to. And so models like Stable Diffusion are helping us to reimagine the way that we approach creativity and art in general. In today's video, I'm going to be helping you understand how models like Stable Diffusion work, and I will be walking you through how you, as a Python programmer can access Stable Diffusion completely for free and start to generate incredible art that you can maybe keep for yourself or maybe give to other people as a gift, <laughs> depending on how good it is. So to help us understand at a very high level how diffusion models work, let's imagine we are trying to teach our model how to generate an image of a beautiful Disney princess. So the first thing we want to do is actually to find an image of a Disney princess. Here is Tiana. She is my current favorite Disney princess and I think the people's princess in general. Um, then from here, we're gonna go ahead and add some noise to the image and let the model know that this is what a Disney princess looks like with one layer of noise added to it. And after that, we go ahead and add some more noise and we say again to the model, this is what a Disney princess looks like with 20 layers of noise added to it. And we keep doing this until we've added um, so much noise that the image basically can't be seen at all. We can also get a bit more specific with this and do this process for several Disney princesses. So for example, we could tell a model that this is what Rapunzel looks like or this is what Cinderella looks like. And we do this over and over again until the model learns each layer it takes to go from a clear image of a Disney princess to a noisy gray screen. Now the model should learn to do this so well that if you give it a noisy gray screen and ask it to reverse this process and do the exact opposite, so take that noisy screen and give you back a clear image of a Disney princess, it should be able to do that. As we see with models like Stable Diffusion, when you put in a text prompt, the model is then fed in a sort of noisy gray screen and then denoises that screen so that it gets back to the image that you asked it to generate. So obviously, this is not all that there is to it, but this is the basic idea behind diffusion models. It's an extremely powerful machine learning technique, and one of the best ways we can use it is to generate some amazing art. So let's go ahead and do that right now by writing out some code. For today's tutorial, I wanted to install a new Stable Diffusion locally from my own machine. And for this, I tried a lot of different <laughs> options, but I have found that for me, working on my Mac M1 was the easiest way to get started. So let's go ahead and take a look at the code on the screen. So the first thing you'll notice is that we have a bunch of libraries that we are importing and the main dependencies that you want to make sure that you, you probably won't have, that you want to make sure that you have is the Keras under a CV um, library and there's also the TensorFlow datasets library. I'm not importing it, but it's needed for Keras CV to work. And so I will put a link as well to all of the uh, requirements that you will need for this tutorial. And I'll just share in general the uh, GitHub. Next, I'm going to go ahead and test to make sure that our GPU is TensorFlow can access our GPU. And so to do that, I'm just gonna write the single line of code here. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and run that. So as you can see on the screen, there are two physical devices that it lists. And as long as you can see GPU listed there, please ignore the zero. Um, but as long as you see it listed there, 
um, it means that your GPU is there and TensorFlow is able to access it. So this is good. Now let's move on to the next step. We want to be able to create some helper functions. The first one is going to be one that will help us to plot the images that are generated onto our screen. So to do that, I'm going to create a, a function called plot that will take an array of images and then we'll be able to display that on our screen. So let's go ahead and do that now. Great. So so that's done and now our images will be plotted to the screen. After that, I want a way or to create a way for us to save um, our images and to be able to store them in a file somewhere, whichever file it is or the file name of our choosing. And to do that, let's go ahead and create a function called save that will do exactly that. In case you would like to export a group of your images, um, to a GIF, we also want to create a function to be able to support you in doing that. So the next thing we're gonna do is we are going to access our stable diffusion model through the Keras CV library. And this is literally just basically almost like, it's just basically like one line of code that we're gonna write to be able to access this. So really nice and simple. Let's go ahead and do that now. We are going to use our model to generate an image based off of text. So I am going to put in a text prompt this, a similar one to what we had um, just to solidify the example that I gave earlier on and that is the beautiful Disney princess prompt. I am going to also add a background as well. So let's go ahead and, <clears throat> and type this out. Now after that we want to choose the batch size, the number of images that are going to be generated. So let's say batch size um, equals let's see three. So next we are going to plot, um, so it's right, plot then images and this is basically just the function we wrote earlier and it allows the images, let's run that, it allows the images to then be plotted to the screen once they're generated. So this process sometimes takes a long time for me. I know maybe it's because my internet is slow that it takes a significant amount of time sometimes. And so I'm just going to go ahead and get some coffee and then I will be back once this is complete. Okay, I just got back and Stable Diffusion has generated these three images for us and I just love how they turned out. They're so, so cute. Very, I'm getting Disney. It's given Disney. It's given Snow White to me right now and I really love this. If you have generated your images just like this and you want to save them to your machine, we're going to use our save function that we had, that I mentioned earlier before. So let me go ahead and uh, write that out. So I'm going to end today's tutorial here. There is so much more that you can do with Stable Diffusion and if you would like me to do some more like playing around or image generation or maybe even video generation using Stable Diffusion, please let me know in the comments. I'm also thinking about doing a video for people who don't have access to a GPU. So if you would like to see that, also let me know. Thank you so much for watching today. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel, like it and share it if you would like to. And I will see you in the next one.